wanted to make this piston ring, I had to buy a solid disc of cast iron. I had to drill out the center of that disc, which left me with a ring, which I could then machine into this piston ring. My name is Conrad Milster, and I'm the chief engineer at Pratt Institute. When I was going to high school, I became quite friendly with the machine shop teacher. He taught night school here at Pratt. It didn't mean anything to me at the time. And one year I went back, and he said, I'm going down to Pratt tonight. They have steam engines down there. Would you be interested in seeing them? So I said, yeah. And I came down with him. I met the chief engineer, and he said, I've got an opening. Are you interested? And that was June of 1958, and I'm still here. We are the maintenance shop for HVAC and heating. We're responsible for the pumps that circulate hot water in the buildings, the condensate pumps that take the steam that we send out and bring it back to us. We have our hands full. Some of the high points of working in a school like Pratt, you can be different and not be considered an oddball. That's one of my problems. I admit that I'm different from, from your typical management, I suppose. When I came here, one or two strays would show up, and I would feed them outside the back door. One day, the stray would come inside and live inside, and it would be fed inside. The cats just gradually began to show up and gradually increase in numbers. We have Little Mama, we have Lestat, we have Dulce, we have The Hunter, we have Teddy, Art School. I don't, I've obviously missed three, at least according to my count. Uh, I sh should know them all, uh, but I don't. In 1967, when Phyllis and I got married, we moved to a house on the Pratt campus. I was living in the Emerson house until it was converted to a dorm three years ago, at which point the Institute moved me into this house. Every day, several groundsmen showed up, and it took them 10 days to move me about 200 feet. I have hundreds of books, reel-to-reel -reel tape, VHS tape, 8mm tape, and now DVDs. And there are boxes which I'm still finding in the attic of things like literally hundreds of books that the library was discarding. I've always been a, a collector of artifacts. Pressure gauges, name plates, in some cases, small mechanical artifacts. I sort of believe in the Victorian dictate that no inch of wall should remain uncovered by something. This is on city water pressure. That completely shuts off the heat for the house. This is the steam pressure in my house, which is going up now because I lowered the thermostat. All right, it's almost time to feed cats, actually. I was born in New York City, raised in Astoria. I lived there all my life. I've always sort of maintained that New York's like a wart. It grows on you. New York City is an incredible place. I am definitely a Brooklynite, even if not a born one. I just can't conceive of living anywhere else. I just, just think this is it's the Big Apple. It sucks, but it's the Big Apple. No, I, I, I don't really go anywhere. Um, my ideal version of an evening is to be able to come home and to actually accomplish something in this cesspool of my desk uh, to, to, to actually get letters answered or something done. 
Well, yeah, I, I go to the occasional theater or show, but if you don't have anybody to go with you, it's not as much fun, and there's a tendency not to do it. I've probably backed off on a lot of that since I lost Phyllis. She was a, a very quiet little person, very laid back. The only negative flaw she had, and it, it was an unfortunate one, but she managed to get over it, is she was a dog person. And she very quickly became a cat person. We were, in a sense, a matching couple. We had a great time. I lost her four years ago now. I'm lonely and I miss her, but that's life. Making parts is interesting. Uh, there's a, a sense of fulfillment, you want to call it that. It involves a lot of problem solving. We're dealing with machinery here that in some cases goes back to 1900. A lot of the machinery I have to deal with is obsolete insofar as spare parts. A lot of people would say, why do you have old machinery? I have it and I like it because it's reliable. Having the part go in and work, that's sort of interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm a person who loves stability, you know, the same thing. We've just celebrated our 125th anniversary and I'm only the fourth chief engineer in that whole period. I think about retirement and I'm sort of afraid to make that move. I'm 78. I'm still healthy. I'm still able to come into work. I think I'm still reasonably mentally stable. I suppose I'm going to have to think about leaving at some point. And one of the difficulties is that when I leave, a lot of things are going to change. Is anybody going to give a damn about keeping the engines in, in, in nice looking condition out there? Will any modern manager put up with incandescent lighting in here? Who's going to take care of the cats when I'm gone? I don't know. I sort of fear for the things which I cherish being threatened.